Would you welcome Sean Poitch as Destiny Sacramento right now? Come on. Show Sean some love. Wow. Oh, have you recouped? I mean, wow. I've never oh. seen anybody drink coffee like this guy has drank coffee this morning. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, we got to get a microphone for you. See, I dropped that ball. For, yeah, for, yeah. Um, I'm surviving on espresso and the Holy Ghost. Hey, there you go. So. Incredible yesterday. And if you were there, you sensed the presence of God at the state capitol taking communion. You saw it there. It was phenomenal. It is Don't incredible. sleep on California. We're waking hey. up, baby. Come on, baby. Sean, welcome to Destiny Sacramento. So you got introduced at 8.30 to Destiny Rockland. Here's Destiny Sacramento. We're glad to welcome you to our house. I want to just say, uh, Sean, you're a gift to the body of Christ. Amazing what God has done in your ministry, in your life uh, over the past four years. Uh, it's a national anointing. Uh, you know, I'm 65, and I have rarely seen one person emerged in just a moment of time and have such a strategic impact in, in our nation. And so I want to thank you as a pastor for being so brave and so full of boldness. You say, hey, I'm going to put the flag of Jesus. And you, you've done it. You, put, you planted it. I, I think I, we'd love to hear, you know, you've got so many stories, but to me, the first intersection of our lives together was back four years ago on that crazy, crazy hot 113 degree day. Uh, you know, it was Sunday evening and there was the fires that had hit California. Right. Felt like apocalyptic moment yeah. there. I mean, smoke, yeah. you know, people are sweating. It was crazy. And you show up and say, hey, we're gonna worship. <laughs> I mean, that was I'm telling you, there are a few things that you can remember in life. That's one of the things I will always remember. In the midst of all the craziness, the shutdowns, the fear, the manipulation, you heard God's voice and said, we're going to the state of California and we're gonna worship on the steps of the state capitol. Phenomenal. So tell us, how did it all happen? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I um, was, was really about to just give up on California, and I was really angry at the Lord that I was in the most locked down, crazy state during the pandemic. And a little bit of my history, I actually, I, I grew up in Montana, and some of you may know, but part of what's central, a tenant to a Montanan is their hatred of California. <laughs> yeah. And so... And so it's just the hilarity of God that I would wind up living here in this crazy time period in history when it, never in the history of our nation has a leader, a governmental figure, let alone a governor, told the church they couldn't sing. Yeah. Like this just never happened, like yeah. ever in American history. And and we experienced that, you know? I mean, strip clubs were open, casinos were open, you could go to Costco, but the church, yeah. gotta watch out for those church people. And it was in that season that I was just in Northern California and I, I just was like, man, God, what is happening? It's not the fact that, you know, uh, you know, governors and leaders are doing this, it's the fact that the church is complying and giving up what they've been doing for 2,000 years. It's like we got 2,000 years of history worshiping through wars, through plagues, through disasters, through darkness. It's yeah. what we do. Yeah. We never stop worshiping. And, and, and I, I just had a moment, and I think the, the coming to the Capitol four years ago was so instrumental and strategic because a lot of, it wasn't just me, like I feel like America had given up on California, and it was like the butt of every joke, and you know, all the, all, everybody couldn't believe the, 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 the intensity of the lockdowns, what we were experiencing, and then they saw 10,000, 11,000 plus 
in the middle of 113 degree heat. Yeah. Rising up to worship Jesus and enthrone him over their state. Yes. And yes. those images, my friends, went like viral across the world. Yes. And it wasn't just the fact that it was a large crowd and that it was hot and it was wild. It was the fact that people saw the courage and the boldness. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's like Billy Graham said, you know, when a courageous man takes a stand, the spines of everyone else are stiffened. And across America, when they saw what happened here four years ago, churches began to open all over America because they said, if they can do it in California, we can do it in our state. Yes. Amen. Oh, Sean, I mean, you just take us back to that moment and reliving it because, I mean, it was crazy. The fear, the anxiety that people were having. And then you saw this remnant group of radical believers saying, we don't care, we're gonna come and we're gonna worship at the state capitol. I think it was the signature event over the past four years, at least for the state, uh, uh, for the church in the state of California. And so God took you on this wild journey. So we started off 2020 and then he sent you all over the place with the message of hope, but the message of we can be bold, we don't have to give up our religious freedoms. Tell us a little bit about the journey. Yeah, I, I feel like, so I grew up as a, as, a mis, as a missions kid. My parents are full-time medical missionaries. So I grew up on the mission field um, and you know, taking worship and the gospel into some of the most persecuted places in the world. Places like North Korea I've been in, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, all kind of crazy places and I've learned a lot from the underground church. I've learned the value of worship. I've learned the value of gathering together. I've learned that these people risk their lives every day because they love Jesus so much. And so I think when, when everything closed down and in America, we had not developed the spiritual muscles that we needed to know what to do in that kind of season. Yeah. And so I, even sharing this, I don't shame people. I just say, hey, listen, we gotta learn. We got to learn yeah. what the rest of the church around the world yeah. understands, yeah. that our worship and our gatherings are priceless. Our worship Amen. and our gatherings are crucial. Amen. Amen. And, and so, but here's the moment that really struck me, and this is what I want to encourage you guys about. I think a lot of times we, we, we buy into a theological framework of self-preservation. We buy into a theological framework where we gotta flee to the easy places. We gotta leave hard places. We gotta you know, protect our own kind of existence. And, and there was a lot of that being taught during the pandemic. Hey, if you really love your neighbor, you're gonna wear three masks and watch a live stream. And you're gonna lock down and be isolated and not talk to anybody and not reach out to people that are struggling because you can't do that because if you really love your neighbor, which means you really love yourself, you're gonna do that. And so when we showed up on the Golden Gate Bridge four years ago and the Lord gave us this mandate you know, to, to bring worship and, and it, at first it was an online pledge. It was just, hey, if you believe that we should rise, we should stand up and, and, and fight for our right to worship, not only biblically, but constitutionally. In America, we have this thing called the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. And it preserves and protects our rights. And the thing is, if we, don't, if we don't use those rights, they will be taken away. That's right. And so it's important to exercise them, Amen. you know? And so anyway, we, when we were on the Golden Gate Bridge, it hit me, guys, because... We were marching to a city that was in 21 day lockdown in place order. And I didn't know if anyone was gonna show up. I'm like, God, this is a crazy idea. We'll be lucky if we get a dozen people there. And we show up on the Golden Gate Bridge and there's 300 people. And these are like the wild people. Like they got flags, they got shofars, they got guitars, like they're ready to rumble. And, and, and so we show up and this motorcycle policeman hears that there's a commotion on the bridge. He drives over from San Francisco, meets us on the north side. And this was in the out, this was in the summer in 2020 of like, it was, you know, rioting and destruction and everyone's angry. And so he drives up wondering what's going on. And he comes up and goes, what are you guys doing? He's like, you look really happy. <laughs> I said, yeah, and by the way, it was incredibly multicultural. 
I mean, we had African American pastors, Asian pastors, the Hispanics rolled deep with us, you know? Yeah. They, they weren't playing games. The Hispanic church, they don't play. Yeah, we don't play. And so, and so we, we, were, we were coming in there, and, and the, the, the biker, he said, the, the motorcycle policeman said, What are you guys doing here? And I told him, I said, Sir, we've come here to pray. He stops his bike, he turns it off, he takes off his helmet. Tears start rolling down his face and he goes, what took you so long? Wow, wow, wow. He said, do you understand what you're standing on right now? Do you know that this is the number one suicide destination in America? He said, I have 12 officers on suicide patrol that are on bicycles going up and down the bridge 24 hours a day. He said, we can't stop the amount of people that are leaping to their deaths. He said, we're not allowed to publish official figures, but he said, more people have jumped to their death on this bridge than have died from the virus. And I begin to realize, my friends, in that moment, that while we think we're helping our neighbor, by locking down, we're letting the world go to hell. No. We're letting our cities be uh, overcome with destruction and death and depression and suicide. When the church is supposed to be the church, yeah. this is the time where we shine. This is the time where we worship. This is the time where we rise up. This is what we were born for, amen? Yeah, amen. And so it lit a fire in me and we just went from city to city and God would send us into Portland during the riots, a block from the worst rioting in America. 7,000 Christians showed up in Portland. I didn't even know there was that many Christians there. Then we go into Seattle during the chop zone, you know, the Antifa chop zone. And, and 4,000 Christians show up in the chop zone. And it overwhelmed the Antifa bros, you know? Like they didn't even know what to do. And all of a sudden these praying mamas are there, right? And you don't mess with a praying mama. Like, you, I don't care who you are. And praying mamas are going around. These Antifa guys got all their gear on. And praying mamas are going around laying hands on them. <laughs> Shakaraba, you know? And, and we just saw the church rise up in city after city after city. And I became so filled with hope, not just for California, but for our nation. God has not finished writing the story over America. And he wants to use us in this hour. You know, you, you bring me back because we're part of this text thread. And I remember just looking at what Sean's doing this week. You know, the, uh, that thread that we're on together, about 30 or 40 pastors. I'm going, this dude's lost his mind. He is <laughs> lost. He's in Portland. He's in Seattle. Incredible. Well, you told uh, the 830 service about when you led worship on the Supreme Court yeah. after the decision uh, yeah. to overturn Roe v. Wade. Yeah. Tell me that experience. Well, I think that that's what led this whole communion revival. If you guys were there last night, you know, one of the most powerful moments is when we took communion on the steps of the Capitol um, in, in the city of Sacrament. Yeah. I've been waiting to do that here. And a lot of that journey started because, you know, one of, the, one of my most privileged moments, and I've been on record labels, and we've had albums that hit number one and blah, 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 blah. But, man, I live for the moments where God inserts you into a moment of history. And I remember being growing up as a teenager, and I remember praying, you know, for the, for the reversal of the death decree of Roe v. Wade in America. And I remember people telling me, oh, it would never happen. It's impossible. It's difficult. You know, that God, it's never going to do. And, and I remember the day that it happened. And then the next day following, I had the privilege of leading the first worship service in post-Row America on the steps of the Supreme Court. Amen. And I can't explain to you guys, like a 50-year prayer request. Wow is answered in a moment, right? And I was there and I wish there would have been 100,000 people. You know, there was a, a few hundred of us, but we were celebrating the fact that God is so faithful to hear our prayers. Amen. 
And, and, and it started this movement where it was like, okay, we're gonna go capital to capital just like we do at the Supreme Court because that's where our, our ministry headquarters is, is, is in the, in, in, on Capitol Hill in D.C. That's where we are. We have a house of prayer there. We're not giving up on D.C. We go into the Capitol Rotunda. We pray. We gather senators. We prophesy over them. We prophesy over congressmen. And I love finding the California ones. <laughs> the, there's a few of them that are wild, yeah. you know, and, and, but here's the thing is like when we, when we take communion in front of these capitals, we've done 36. Last night was our 36th capital. Yeah, awesome. Show, show them your jacket. Show, turn around. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. these are all the states we're going to this year. Yeah. You can pray for us. We got 14 more to go. These are all the states from 2024. We're ending up on the National Mall eight days before the election. As the whole world's freaking out, yeah. we're going to be worshiping Jesus. But every capital, we like to remind ourselves and every power and principality that no matter what curses, no matter what corruption, no matter what, uh, you know, a, a darkness and death and perversion is over this state, that the blood of Jesus, Jesus. is Amen. enough. Amen. Amen. The power in the blood. Power in the blood. And, uh, you know, I've told this group of people, we told it last night, my grandma, she was a Pentecostal, 103 years old before she went to see Jesus. She would just shake, put her hand on me and just, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. And there's such a powerful moment. Last night, because uh, we take communion all the time here. We, we preach on the blood. We're actually a church that preach, preaches on the blood of Jesus. But there was something different of being at the state capitol and taking communion and pleading the blood of Jesus over our leaders, over our state. I'm telling you, it, it was a great moment, a significant moment last night there. Transforms lives. We saw that, that video of it, Ricky, that came to the front of the yeah. platform, but you've seen it all over. Yeah. People's lives are being transformed. Not only are we being bold, but yeah. lives are being touched. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like, and I, I know, I, I feel like even being here with you guys in this church, this is so special for me because I know so many people who had their lives marked at this altar right here. Yeah. Yeah. Like this actual altar in this building. Right. And, and we have to recapture Amen. this old school, I call it old school Christianity. Amen. Like I know that people want to, want to be seeker sensitive and they want to kind of blend in and they want, I'm telling you, that's not what America needs. Yeah. We need old school altar calls. Yeah. We need old school laying on of hands. We need old school communion. Yeah. We need old school revival. We need to bring back the things that happened in this building. God did it before and he's going to do it again. And he's going to use this church in Sacramento to ignite a revival fire again in this city. Amen. Amen. Woo. Come on. These people are feeling it. They're feeling it. I'm telling you, it's special what God's doing here. He, he is reviving old things, dead things. He's restoring the dreams of a generation. Amen. Just like Pastor Christine, last Sunday night, our, our altars are filled with people's lives being transformed, and that's what revival is about, and that's the heart of this house. We want a move of God. Do you, can you just like, you have a national perspective, Sean. Just encourage us that God's not done with California, but God's not done with the United yeah. States. Yeah, I, I think it's really, it feels really hip to subscribe to this kind of doomsday narrative. Um, and and it's, it's interesting too, because a lot of these people, they call themselves prophetic. Um, and I'm kind of like, eh. Like, you're just saying what the media is saying. You're just saying, like, it's, that's not prophetic. It's actually kind of pathetic. <laughs> like, like, being a prophetic people means that you're pulling down a reality that doesn't currently exist. Yeah. Right, a prophetic people in the midst of uh, the craziness of our state and all that's happening, a prophetic people gathers in front of the Capitol and appeals to heaven. Amen. Right, and I feel like that, that in America right now, just to encourage you, and, and I know like, you know, some of you guys are like, it's crazy out there. Let me just tell you something. Like, it ain't even started yet. Yeah. 
We're not even into election season. Yeah. Like they got plans. They got ways to make us chaotic and frustrated and anxious. And, and they got plans to divide us. And listen, buckle up, buttercup. Like <laughs> you got to get ready in your spirit. You got to get ready in your heart. Yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta understand that Jesus alone is the only answer for our nation. And, 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 but, but. But also understand that God's not finished with this state. And, and, you know, I shared this testimony three weeks ago. You know, I, I was telling you guys in the beginning that I was frustrated and wanted to leave California. And, you know, now I have four children that I'm raising here. And we're fighting Amen. for the promises of God over this state. Amen. We're saying, God, you did it in Azusa Street. You did it in the Jesus People Movement. Do it again in our day, you know. And... Three weeks ago on Pentecost Sunday, we held the largest synchronized baptism in the history of the world. A couple of people are excited about that. So in California, in this state, this blue left, whatever, this state, we held the largest synchronized baptism. That means more people baptized at one time that this is Guinness Book of World Records, okay? 12,182 people in one day. Y'all need to send that yeah, to your friends in yeah, Texas. Yeah, yeah. Send that to your friends in Florida and Tennessee. Like yeah. God is flipping the script on the enemy yeah. in our state. And he's raising up a remnant revival movement. Amen. And you guys are a part of it. Yes, amen. Uh, so, you got this place fired up, Sean, and uh, we're, we're in it. Uh, but we're going to be seeing a kind of a um, end times kind of thing happen. What can we do? What can we do to make sure as a church we stay strong? Okay, this would be my encouragement. In Matthew 24, let me just read this to you really quick. This is what it says. This is the end of the days. Dun, 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 dun. You guys ready? Matthew 24. Bum, bum, bum. So Jesus says this. He says, Jesus answered, um, verse 4, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear wars and rumors of wars. Uh, welcome to 2024. But see to it that you are not alarmed. See to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginnings of birth pains. This is the beginning. Yeah. And then it says this, then you'll be handed over, persecuted. And then in verse 10, it says, At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. This is what's happening in the church across America. People are overwhelmed by darkness instead of being overwhelmed by God and his goodness. Amen. We cannot allow ourselves to exalt darkness. Yeah. Yes, we know it's happening. Yes, we know it's gnarly. Yes, we know there's perversion. Yes, we know there's a, agendas to attack our children. Yes, we know there's all this stuff going on, but we cannot allow our narrative to be one that the world is writing. He's writing the story. Yeah, amen. Come on, guys. Yeah. And, and guess what? His stories end really well. Yeah, amen. And so even in this verse in Matthew 24, it says, because of the increase of weakness, the love of most grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached Amen. in the whole world as a testimony of all nations. So nothing can stop the spread of an unstoppable kingdom. Amen. Yeah. Not a governor, not a president, not legislation, like nothing can stop it. And you got to understand that you are on the gospel train, baby. Yeah. We ain't yeah. stopping. We're on the revival train. Yeah. yeah. And that's where we're headed. And that's my encouragement because I think it's going to get a lot more crazy. I know it is. Yeah. And it's important for us to buy into the narrative of heaven. This is why worship, I mean, I love the worship of this house. You guys, I love the worship yeah. here of this church. You gotta get lost. I call it lost in the sauce, man. 
Like you got like just unplug from Twitter and yeah. Facebook and being angry yeah. and watching cable news. Just unplug for a minute. Yeah. Plug into heaven. Yeah. Remember what it's all about. Yeah. And when you and when you have and I'm just praying over this church that the worship will even get more crazy. Yeah. And it's going to fill the streets of the city and it's going to fill the high schools and the campuses and it's going to take over the city. This is what we do. Not contained in the church. And so, guys, we got to, the crazier it gets out there, the louder we got to worship. Amen. The more we got to tap into heaven. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the answer for sure. So uh, I'm going to have our our worship team come back out and, um, you know, Sean, as I mentioned, and we had such a powerful release of God's spirit in our first service. Yeah, but, you know, there's an apostolic anointing on you. And uh, we want that impartation to come into this house. Uh, you know, God has done an amazing thing in this house over the last nine months. It's been absolutely incredible what God has done. And uh, he's restored a lot of, you know, some of the things that were uh, torn down. The, the altar is open and uh, people are finding Jesus here. But we want that anointing that rests upon your ministry to be a part of this house. We want to be partners. Hey, by the way, can, can they go to D.C. with you? Please. Please. You, you come? Please. We need, some, we need some wild Jesus people from California yeah. with us. Yeah. America needs that. But we, we want that anointing to be in this house, the bold, unapologetic proclamation of, of Jesus, that we're not going to back down, that we really believe that Jesus said that he'd build his church and the gates of hell will not, will not prevail against it. I mean, is there a greater contrast than what was happening yesterday? Oh, wow. Where you have people taking communion and worshiping on the steps cap, the step of the Capitol, two blocks away. People are walking around naked. The, the, pray, the pride festival, debauchery, evil. And here we are. This God is going to build his church in the gates of hell. Whatever hell brings, he's gonna, still going to build his church. And we want to tap in. We want to tap into the anointing that God has put upon you. We want to be a part of that. Amen. Yeah, let's just stand up. Let me pray. I, um, I feel like the Lord's speaking. I feel this verse in, in Joel 2. One of, the, one of the signs of the outpouring of the Spirit, and this is what Peter referenced in the book of Acts, was your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Amen. And my encouragement is that this Move that God's releasing is a multi generational move. Nobody can opt out. (laughs) Like, nobody can. Like, everybody's activated, everybody's a part, and there are dreams for the older generation that God wants to revive. And you know who I'm speaking to? People that were a part of past dreams, even in this building. God wants to revive the dreams, don't let them die. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young people will see visions, all right? So I just want you to lift your hands. I want to pray. Just receive this. Lord, we thank you that we get to be alive at such a time as this. Lord, we are so truly honored. Lord, to be a part of your army that you're raising up, God. We thank you, Jesus, that you are not finished with America. We thank you, God, that you're not finished with California. We thank you today, God, that you want to ignite a fire in our hearts and in our families. God, one that burns bright, one that doesn't just stay in the confines of the four walls of the church, but God, one that impacts the world. I pray today for a spirit of courage and boldness to rise up in the body here in Sacramento. Lord, the city of Sacrament. This is your city. God, this is your people. These are your, these, this is your ground, Lord. And we just say over the church today, release the fire of your presence. Release the old school anointing on your church again to believe signs and wonders and miracle to believe that you are the only answer for our nation 
I pray, God, that you would, come on, just begin to speak in the Spirit. Come on, just begin. I pray for a spirit of worship to take over this building. I pray, God, that in the coming months, they will not be able to stop the sound of praise. That worship will hijack the order of service. That worship will take over the nursery. That worship will take over the school. Lord, I pray, God, let this once again be a building and a place that houses your presence in such a great day in Jesus' name. Everybody raise your hands. Everybody raise your hands right now. We're going to worship. We're going to worship right now. He's worthy. He's worthy of it all. Come on, church. This is the end of service. We're ushering in the presence of God.